introduced Jerry Maguire and the Beethoven movies to her work as writer, director, producer, and star of her own C ABC sitcom, Life with Bonnie. Our first guest is truly talented. Please welcome the very busy Bonnie Hunt. Very nice. Wow. Hi, Bonnie. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. You look great. Oh, thanks. I showered. Yeah? <laughs> That's yep. it. I no. walked through the lobby. Did Mary tell you already, your producer, Mary? Yeah. Well, what, what happened? You guys, I was driving here and I had a cup of coffee in the back seat of the car. Well, obviously I wasn't driving, I was being driven. <laughs> and I'm drinking the coffee and I have a light blue sweater on, feeling pretty good about myself. And uh, I got here and I'm walking through the lobby and I thought, boy, everybody's really looking at me. I'm pretty famous, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of a nice reception. I got into my room and my publicist said, what's with the stain on your shirt? I said, oh. <laughs> I don't have a stain on my shirt. And I had spilled the coffee all the way down the front of my shirt. And what's bizarre is that I had no nerve endings, apparently. Uh, exactly. I felt, <laughs> I felt nothing. I felt yeah. nothing, because, you know. That, and, and so I switched with one of the girls that was with me, Susan. Now I have her. You didn't notice that there was no coffee left in your cup or anything? <laughs> well, it wasn't that much. Oh, well, you said yeah. it was all down your shirt. It, well, all right, maybe I said all down for the comedy yeah. value. It was I actually see. a stain on the back, yes, and I didn't have a story. <laughs> You, you need a hip fib. We actually were trying to get that started because I have the same problem. Whatever I always spilling. I'm yeah. spilling, and so I'm trying to bring hips, bibs back and make them hip. I've always always spill, and my mother has this thing where she always we always know what she had for dinner <laughs> because it's like that shelf. You know how your mom has. Yeah. I mean, it's just a scrape. <laughs> She's so cute, and then she always yeah. puts a pillow down. She thinks that you don't have to lose weight as long as there's a pillow on the couch. Uh <laughs> And if we go to somebody's house, am I scaring you by standing up? If we go to somebody's house, she always walks in, she goes, get me a pillow or something. Huh. And then she walks over, she walks over, and she goes, oh, it's so nice to be here. And then... <laughs> Honest to God. That's great. Yeah. It's a good idea. One year at Christmas, my brother Pat gave her a sweater, and his wife sewed a pillow on the front of the <laughs> I swear. Yeah. We, all, we always tease my poor mom, you That's know. That's hilarious. What are you going to do? Well, she's uh, obviously used to it by now. Yeah, she's a good audience, though. She, she likes a good ribbing. Well, and is, is your mom... The, here, we have something in common, which I really like. We have a lot of things in common, but um, we both are obsessed with the Swiffer. I love it. The, the, I have everyone. Do you have the mitt? Uh, the Swiffer mitt? Yes. It, it's but you like don't a... bathe with it or anything. You, you... No, no, no. <laughs> well, they have bathing mitts, which always cracks right. me up. I'm like, what's wrong with a washcloth? You got to yeah. wear gloves that have that are made out of washcloth. Right. Cloth. It's a loofah thing, sort of, too. Right, right. Do you know what the Swiffer is, though? By the way, that we're talking about, that you can oh, clean. Oh, it's this. Oh, this is the best. And by the way, everybody in the audience is getting one, just in case you don't know. Oh. All right. Pretty great. They are great. Yeah. Now, why do you like them so much? This sounds like we're doing an ad for them, but I really just no. It's the. <laughs> You feel gratified by the results because yeah. you kind of <laughs> you yeah. kind of go around the floor and you're like, there is a lot of dirt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then you get to take it off and I turn it around. You don't throw it out, do you? You turn it around. I turn it around. Okay, I do too. Yeah. <laughs> I turn it around and I use the other side and there's like a little less dirt and then you keep yeah. going until you're like, the floor is really clean. Yeah. Yeah. It's and it's especially if you have pets, it's great for hair. Oh yeah, I have and two it, dogs. It yeah. goes all the way around and different things. It does. It's, it, it's got a great mechanism yeah. for you know two It's like cents. you're driving a, a sports car or something yes. the way it corners. <laughs> it does. Yeah. It moves. It moves. It's a great dance partner. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a great it really dance. is. It really moves. Wow, well, I think that's a great invention. Yeah. You know, I see that stuff and I just go, isn't it great that somebody's mind like solved that problem? Yeah. It's, it, yeah. And there's now a new thing. I don't know if I shouldn't say if it's the same company that does that and sucks at the same time. There's a like a, I don't know how it does it. It. it... You said nothing. I, yeah, I, I may be thinking of something else, but I think that it's. By the look on your face, yeah. you are. It's yeah. a, no, it's a thing that it's a, a dirty uh, devil thing. Right, it shoots it's, water. Shoots water. And then it sucks it back up. And then it has that. It's, it's like, like there's all kinds of things happening. It, it may be really long. I don't know. No, I fell for one of those. I fell for one of those, but the hole in it that brings the dirt up is like this big. I'm like, that's ridiculous. If you have two dogs. Yeah. You know. Yeah. It, well, it's probably... Like uh, tumbleweeds rolling around the house. Well, you don't have that much because you refuse to even hire a cleaning woman, right? Well, it's not that I refuse to. It's just that... A friend of mine, when I first moved out, I mean, we didn't grow up with cleaning ladies. My mom had seven kids, and we only cleaned the house when the doorbell rang, and everything went into the closet. You know? <laughs> so it was like, 
<laughs> when I got out here, everybody had a cleaning lady. I, I don't have any children. I'm married. I make good money. My mother had seven kids, no money, no help, but she still managed to, well, we really, the house wasn't like clean. Right. It <laughs> yeah. appeared to Let, be. Let's be yeah. honest. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So I, I always have this fear that they use the same washcloth on the uh -huh. toilet they do on the counter. Uh -huh. And I stayed at a friend's house who was like a producer lady when I first moved out here. And I was the house sitter for, you know, whatever they give you, a hundred bucks or something for a couple weeks. So I stayed at her house and, and she had a cleaning lady and I was watching the cleaning lady one day. I'm reading a magazine and she comes over. I'm like, oh, fancy, you know, I got to let the cleaning lady in. And I'm trying to act like I'm natural in the giant mansion. And um, <laughs> this lady's cleaning the house and I, I swear to God, she had the same towel in her hand for three hours. <laughs> well, she wiped the coffee pot with it, the thing. And I thought, well, sure, there's nobody here. And she's probably yeah. really angry. These people are so rich and she's right. got to clean their house. Right. <laughs> It's just a really a lethal combination. Yeah, well, there are people that, that in any business that are going to rip you off. I used to have somebody that, because I actually, I love to clean, but I do have somebody yeah, that, that I actually clean before they get there because I feel guilty. Like, and then I apologize if there's a dish in the sink. I'm sorry I left the glass. But Because um, I really like to clean. But um, I used to have a, a house cleaner that I would walk in the room. I swear she'd be like, she'd have my mail in her hand and she'd all be like, oh! She'd just turn around. <laughs> So, Bonnie, this, is, this can't even be real. I, I heard about your first audition day. You moved here, and your first audition day sounds like it's not even real. No, yeah, well, you know, that's the life of the Irish. Uh -huh. <laughs> I was so excited to get a call that I actually had an audition. You know, I moved out here, and you don't get an audition because you don't get an audition unless you have an agent, and you don't get an agent unless you have worked, so it's a vicious cycle. So I get this call from this agent that somebody had seen me at the Second City in Santa Monica. And I was called into, I think it was, uh, what was that show, uh, 21 Jump Street? Yeah. Okay, well, you know. Yeah. And I thought, oh my God, you know. And it was for a scene of a girl crying in a cemetery. <laughs> and I said, I'm gonna prove I can act. <laughs> and I'm gonna get this job. So I go there, and my agent says to me on the phone, whatever you do, don't tell any stories when you get in there, because you only confuse them. If you're funny, they think you can't be dramatic. Don't confuse them. And I said, okay, I promise. I won't tell any stories. I won't do anything. I'll just read the role. So I walk to my car, and as I'm walking to the little, I had a Geo Metro, it was 16 bucks a day from LMO rental car. <laughs> and I walk into the car, and a guy comes by on a bike and takes my purse off my shoulder and just steals it. I said, oh my God, I have no makeup on now. I've got 15 minutes to get there and you gotta have, you gotta look like a girl when you show up at these things. <laughs> and I get in the car and I thought, I don't have any money, I have no purse, but I don't care if the purse has been stolen because I have an audition. I'm gonna have tons of money eventually. It's 21 Jump Street. <laughs> so, you know, the adrenaline, I was so excited. So I'm driving and driving and I see a white hen pantry, you know, in Hollywood. I pull over and I dig through the car for any change that I've dropped in there. And I've got like 89 cents. I go in there and they have one color lipstick like bright red for 70 cents. I buy the lipstick. I thought I can do blush, eyeshadow, a little, you know. <laughs> My mother was always able to do her whole face with red gone bright lipstick from Walgreens. You know, she would paint her whole face on in two seconds. So <laughs> she sounds like a lovely woman the way oh, you have to see it. <laughs> She's fantastic. Yeah. So I get, I get the lipstick and I'm walking back to the car and I think, I don't remember leaving my driver's window open, you know. Somebody threw a rock through the window of the car. <laughs> And I go, okay, this is ridiculous. Someone is following me. So I get, I wipe the glass off the seat. I don't care. I've got 10 more minutes now. I'm getting to the audition. I drive there, a parking spot right in front. And I thought, now this is nice. God knows I've had a tough day. I'm late. I got a parking spot right in front. I opened my door and a truck came by and took the door right out. <laughs> this is, uh, I get out of the car and I thought, it doesn't matter. I've got an audition. And, <laughs> And then I wait for the traffic to die down. I run in the middle of the street and get the door that's not like an accordion. And I run back and I put it in the trunk of the car and I, and I go into the audition. And of course I say, I'm so sorry I'm late. You wouldn't believe what happened to me. I say, the cursed person has been stolen. I bought the lipstick. I did my face. And they're all laughing and everything. And I thought, oh, you know, I tell them what happened. So uh, I do the audition and I cry, the girl at the funeral, and I'm sobbing. And I'm thinking I've had plenty of motivation, you know. <laughs> and I get back to my apartment that I'm sharing. Richard Kind, you know, Richard Kind from Spin City, yeah. the actor. We were sharing an apartment. And I see the light flashing on the answer machine and I hit it and I said, Bonnie, it's your agent. They called me from the audition. They thought you did a wonderful job, but they were very confused by the monologue, the bit you did when you first nope. got in. 
and so I called the agent and I said, I was, I was so upset. And I said, no, everything happened to me. My purse has been stolen, my car, and I'm crying. She goes, oh, would you quit being so dramatic? And I thought, well, this doesn't end. You know, <laughs> dramatic for the agent, too yeah. funny for the audition. Oh. I'm a victim of, uh, you know, crime. But that is unreal. Yeah, but well, that was a good start. Though. But everything is, yeah. It well, isn't. it was, because you know, it couldn't, hopefully it, it wasn't going to get worse. It can't get worse than that, right. no. You'd think that it, it couldn't, but sometimes it does. Well, please. But, but your show, your show now, Life with Bonnie, is, is, is hilarious and smart oh, thanks, and, and unique, and I, I love seeing stuff like that. You have a clip of, uh, of the show, and, uh, and this is the Smothers Brothers. Is oh, like, thrill of my life, you guys. First time Smothers Brothers are on primetime television in 25 years, and they do our show. And they're hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> Don Lake and I, my writing partner and I, were trying to come up with a premise that would be great for the, for the guys, and because it's intimidating to write for them, first of all. And we came up with the fact that uh, David Allen Greer's character has moved into my home because his home is burned down on our show. So we've made Tommy and Dick Smothers the contractors that are working on his house. <laughs> and, you know, it's a lost art, the comedy team. We don't see comedy teams anymore because it's total teamwork and cooperation, and you have to put your ego aside. It's, it's really something incredible to watch. It's great. And They're it looks, on tomorrow, uh, Friday night. Yeah. It, it's on Friday night? Yeah, Friday All night, right. Ellen. All it's right. on ABC. Okay, Bonnie. <laughs> um, Life with Bonnie is on Fridays at 9.30 on ABC.